Hello, I'm pulling dust duty, just like the protagonists in this week's episode, The Other Guys, the 2010 movie that spoofed the high octane, adrenaline inducing, high speed chases and the officers who engage in them. Now, cinematic car chases and high speed pursuits are cool. I'm not here to argue that fact. I remember as a 14 year old being glued to the TV in the summer of 1994 as a very high profile police chase unfolded in front of the public. This week's episode, The Other Guys, showed several high speed pursuits and brazen burglaries. It also exposed the inherent danger and liability of these chases, even if you don't own a Prius. And car chases are one of the most dangerous activities in American policing. But for decades, the government has not tracked deaths tied to these pursuits. The San Francisco Chronicle's investigation, Fast and Fatal, includes the fullest accounting yet of police pursuit deaths. Between 2017 and 2022, at least 3,000 336 people were killed in police pursuits and at least 1,300 people died in 2020 and 2021, the most recent years for which federal data was available. And that averages to about two people per day. And fatal police pursuits happen in every state, but some smaller states such as Georgia and Alabama have disproportionate numbers of deaths. Combined, these two states are home to under 5% of the U.S. population, but accounted for over 10% of police pursuit deaths. And as of this recording, there is no national standard governing whether and how police should chase and apprehend suspects. Instead, law enforcement agencies operate under rules that vary by department. Most departments have relatively loose discretionary policies and leave it to officers to determine whether to initiate a chase. A report last year by a predominant police think tank recommends that departments should limit pursuits to people who have committed a violent crime and pose an imminent threat to others. In most cases, the police initiated most of these pursuits over traffic offenses, nonviolent crimes, or no crime at all. Just one out of 15 people killed in these chases were drivers chased for a suspected violent crime. And not to be a bummer or the bearer of bad news, if I haven't been already, but more than half of the people killed in these cases weren't the driver seeking to get away. They were either bystanders or passengers in fleeing vehicles. And I know, movies tend to omit these details. It's funner to see a car go through a plate of glass, a random fruit stand, or a notorious building in Lower Manhattan. However, let's look at some of the numbers. From 2019 to 2023, so four years, taxpayers spent over $51 million to resolve lawsuits brought by 16 people injured during police pursuits. That's an average of $3.2 million per case. Now keep in mind, the first chase we saw in the movie caused 12 million in damage alone. No word on lawsuits. So with that data, many jurisdictions have all but banned police pursuits, which seems on the surface, like the police are letting perps walk free. And that is simply not the case. Today, with cameras everywhere, data available on our phone and tracking devices, even on our fitness trackers, the 
golden days of high speed chases may be over. Now, recently we were running errands and saw a man run across the feeder and disappeared into tall grass on the other side. He was immediately caught thanks to a helicopter that zeroed in on his location and was captured without the use of a dangerous high-speed chase. The entire incident lasted maybe five minutes. Oh, and a mall security guard showed up just in time to watch cops arrest him. So thank you for your help, mall cop. Yes, those thieves you see in smash and grabs and the criminals you see fleeing the scene are brazen. But more than likely, police forces have their entire data profile before they even enter the store. And if you've ever worked retail, you know that the company policy is for workers not to approach shoplifters out of concern for both employee safety and of course, store liability. In active shoplifting cases, of which I saw a handful when I worked retail, the protocol is to report the person to authorities and also notify mall security. Just, I guess, you know, because they like to be in the loop, I guess. Now, once a shoplifting incident has been committed, they can track the person, scan a license plate, or perhaps use an app like Alan invented to find the perp using the back of their head to arrest them after the fact. And yes, all of that is less sexy than arresting the perp on site, but it's way more effective, saves lives, and prevents property damage. So the other guys parodied high-speed chases and the adrenaline junkies who pursue them. What may look like now as police in action is a prudent investment in public safety and prevention of costly lawsuits. Look at it this way. These policies help ensure your workday commute, your weekend errands, or your jaunts to the beach, Galveston's great this time of year, are not disrupted by a destructive duo determined to do as much damage as possible. So go ahead and give that subscribe button a honk so you never miss a thing. We appreciate our listeners, our viewers, our supporters. We thank you so much. Go ahead and subscribe to us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. As you know, or you should, new episodes of the Real Relationships podcast drop every Thursday, along with this show on YouTube. I always say it, but I especially mean it with this episode. We'll see you soon and please stay safe.